Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps of mixing epoxy so that you get a perfect mix every time. All right guys, let's talk tools. First thing you'll need, if you're mixing epoxy any amount that's substantial, you're gonna need a drill with a paddle. Now you can hand mix, but this makes your life so much easier. Calibrated mixing buckets. It's real important guys that you get a quality bucket. We like the TCP buckets. We get them on Amazon. We'll link that uh, in the description of this video. And it has all of your calibrations. You'll need a variety of stir sticks. Very important. Most importantly, you want to use nitrile gloves to protect your hands. Let's talk epoxy. We use stone coat countertop epoxy. It's a one to one ratio and it's mixed by volume, not by weight. Our recommended amount is three ounces per square foot, depending on what epoxy you're gonna use, it may change. For this video, we're gonna mix up 18 ounces. That's gonna be nine ounces of A and nine ounces of B. By volume, not by weight. Pro tip, part B with stone coat countertop is less viscous, thinner basically, than the part A. So we're gonna pour part B first. It's gonna give us a little more accurate measurement. All right, so by pouring B first, you can see it's pretty thin. Now, when we pour part A in, because A is thicker, more viscous, it's gonna actually fall down through part B, it's not gonna stick to the sides as if we were to pour part A first, and we're gonna get a much easier blend. Pro tip, if you're mixing in a cold environment, heat up very slowly your epoxy prior to mixing. It'll make it much easier to mix and you won't entrain as many bubbles. All right, so if you're mixing with a paddle, push it all the way down. You're gonna start off very slowly. We're gonna mix for two minutes and hold your bucket. Try to keep the paddle submerged as you mix because if you bring it above the surface and then you mix, you're gonna entrain air into your mixture. If you mix really quickly, you're gonna get a lot of bubbles. My epoxy now almost has a white tint to it. I'm not worried because as soon as I pour this out onto my surface and torch it, I'm gonna get rid of all those micro bubbles. But to avoid that, what you'll wanna do is heat up your epoxy just a little bit. Also use your mixing paddle on low, your drill on low, and keep your paddle submerged below the surface and you won't get that. After you mix with your paddle, you're gonna hand scrape your bucket and then hand stir. Now there's a lot of epoxy recommendations out there that say, to pour into one bucket and then transfer into another bucket. This kind of takes the place of that. And as long as we've been doing epoxy, and as long as we mix using this technique, I have never had a sticky spot. What causes sticky spots is when you mix, if you don't either transfer it into another bucket or you scrape your edges and then hand mix, what's happening is all the material that is stuck on the side of this bucket is not thoroughly mixed. By scraping and hand stirring, you're ensuring that everything in your bucket is thoroughly mixed. If you don't, what happens is when you go to pour this out onto your surface and then you scrape your edges, you're grabbing that material on the side of your bucket that's not properly mixed and that's why you get sticky spots. Okay, so now your epoxy is mixed and it's ready to go to the next step, depending on what kind of finish you're gonna be doing. Now let's talk about some do's and don'ts. One, as soon as A and B come together and you start mixing it, you are creating a chemical reaction. And what happens is there's an exothermic reaction happening right now in this bucket. So if I were to leave this epoxy in the bucket for any length of time, Eventually, it's gonna get very hot and it's going to cure very, very quickly. You'll notice that it starts to get really thick and if you leave it for too long, it'll actually solidify the whole bucket. It could actually melt this bucket. So pot life 
is very important. And you need to know, depending on what epoxy brand you're using, what is your pot life. Don't leave mixed epoxy in a bucket for any length of time. All right, guys, so we have a mixed bucket of epoxy. Stay tuned for part two, where I'm going to show you all the different ways to tint what's in this bucket. So until next week, remember, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. Thanks for watching.